Hi, this is Philip with G6 Technology Services. In this video, we're going to be going over backup and restore for Sophos UTM9. Uh, this is one of the features that I just absolutely love. It works perfectly if you ever need it for some reason. Um, I've never had a system crash on me or anything where we actually needed to use the backup file. It would only be if somebody accidentally deleted some rules or changed a setting. Then you're able to restore from a backup to get things back up and running quickly. It's also really useful if you need to upgrade your hardware or you need to switch from one model to another. So if you're on an SG-105 and you need to move up to an SG-125 or something like that, then all you have to do when you set up the new unit is just provide the backup file and it'll be exactly identical to how it was before. So it's a very quick process. So we'll go over how to schedule backups, how to run one manually, and then after that we'll go over how to actually use one to restore the system. So first thing we'll need to do is go over to management and then backup and restore. So as we can see here we do have some available backups. Every time before an up-to-date package is installed it creates a system backup. Just in case something goes wrong it gives you a chance to restore. As we can see here it says creator system that's who we can tell that happened. And then also we manually created one before we started the up-to-date process. So if you need to manually create a backup, um, say for example you think that you're going to play with some settings and you're not quite sure what's going to happen, you want to make sure you have it, or you're going to be manually creating a backup because you're planning on this is your upgrade window, you're going to do an up-to-date and you want to have it, or if you're going to be, again, like I said earlier, switching to new hardware and you need to just create one that's up-to-date as of this minute and you don't want to rely on an automatic backup from the previous night, then this is where you would do that here and create a backup. So you can add a comment and how that looks right here next to this little comment icon before update and then here I didn't put one so that section's just not there. So you don't have to use comments, it's just if you um, need to remember why you made this backup or if there was some setting that got changed and you just want to say this is before that happened you could put it there. So we'll just go to create backup now and that creates our backup. So we have it right here and then from here you can download a copy which is this little download icon here. You can optionally encrypt it and so that means if somebody else gets their hands on it they won't be able to upload it and restore without having the password. So we'll just download that and they're very small. We just have, uh, let's see, yeah, 816k, so that's a small backup file. It's easy to keep a lot of those without taking up too much space. You can also email one to someone or to yourself and optionally encrypt it, and then it'll give you the chance to put in a password, and that way it'll be in someone's email, they can just download it. So depending on your security policy, you may not want to have firewall configs in email. You might want it downloaded directly to your workstation, but that's completely up to you. And the other option is that if your system is not um, being worked on immediately and you just want the security of having automatic backups being generated, then we just go over to our automatic backups tab. And this is just the essentials firewall, so we don't actually have access to that, but I'll just go over the settings anyway. We can see through it through this uh, faded out overlay. So what we usually do, I'll just have it on daily for interval. And then maximum number of backups, you can adjust that. I think I have it on 30. And then send backups by email is optional. If you just leave this top section, then they'll just show up in here. And they won't actually go to another device. So that's fine if you just want to keep a, uh, a record or just keep a history in case somebody monkeys with the setting and it doesn't work afterwards, somebody breaks something, you can just go back and revert. But I think it's a good idea to email with encryption. So you can check on encrypt email backups, put in a password and hit apply. And that way if the hardware does fail then you'll have a recent backup 
in your inbox and you can just download it so that way you don't have to worry about making sure you manually go in here and download one every so often. So that's pretty easy. It just shows up as, as an attachment in your email and you can delete them whenever you're done. And that also allows you to store less on the actual device if you don't want all of them on here. And again, it doesn't take up very much room. As we just saw, a backup was like 800K or something. And uh, yeah, it's only 800K, so it's not that big. So if you want to just store 10 or 14 backups on the device and then email them to yourself, then even after the device automatically starts deleting old backups, you'll still have them in your email if you needed to go back further than that for some reason. So we'll go ahead and test the restore function. So here is how you do that, just this little green, uh, kind of looks like a refresh icon or something, this little circle with an arrow on it. So we'll go ahead and change something here. We'll say, we'll go in our interfaces and we'll just delete this guest interface and it's gonna delete all these other objects and delete these, alter and delete these firewall rules. That's two pages of changes it's gonna do, so we'll just hit okay. So that rule's gone, or that interface is gone, and our uh, DHCP server's gone. The firewall rules that talked about that one are gone. So now, we realize, uh-oh, I didn't mean to do that. And it's going to take a lot of work to go back and undo all of that. So fortunately, we just made a backup a few minutes ago. So all we have to do is find the one right here, 2309, that was just a few minutes ago. And we can just hit Restore. Restoring a backup will log you out of Web Admin. Are you sure? Yes. So we just have to wait for that process to finish and um, it'll, it'll restart all the services that need to be, it'll restore all of our settings, and then we just log back in. And then here's our guest interface back. And if we look over under interfaces and routing, there's our guest interface right there. Network services, it's back here. We have our DHCP server back. And we have our firewall rules back. So as you can see, it's a very quick and painless process. It's a you know a turnkey solution, if you will call it that. Um, it, it, I couldn't ask for anything better. It's it's very easy to work with. And if we look back under backup and restore, then we still have our backup here. It doesn't remove it, so we don't have to worry about creating it again. So very quick and easy to do backup and restore. One of my favorite features, along with the up-to-date, I think both of those things are major issues of concern when you're talking about equipment that has to be available all the time to, to uh, support your business. So you don't want updates to go wrong, and you don't want backup and restore to go wrong. So something that's always important to do, if you have some system that does backup and restore, don't just collect your backup files and hope you'll never need it. It's a good idea to test and make sure that the restore functionality actually does what it's supposed to do. And in this case, it does. It does it very well, very quickly, and there are no negative consequences from doing that. The system is no less reliable, and uh, there's, no, there's no downside to it. So that's also really nice. It doesn't create a bunch of junk and duplicate things. It includes all the important changes. The only thing I will mention that it does not cover, which personally I don't think is a big deal, is that it does not include your logging and reporting data. So if you have to move to a new device or you have a device die and you need to restore it, any of the historical reports and logs will be lost. Which again, I don't think that's a big that's a big deal. You'll have your functionality back, your network will be working again and it'll continue to generate logs going forward if you need that information. So I think we covered everything. I don't see anything else. Well, there's this import backup. That's pretty self-explanatory. If you need, if it's automatically deleted a backup because your interval is set to uh, keep a maximum of 10 backups, so after 10 have built up and it 
deletes the oldest one. If you needed to add one, you can just go down to Import, and you go to Choose a File. You just select it, and then we'll just move that up a little bit and start your upload. And it wants a password because it's encrypted, and we'll import it. And it's been imported, and it's actually the same one that we downloaded earlier. So that's there if you need it. Um, anyway, I think that covers everything. Uh, if you have any questions, if there's something that I didn't cover that you need to know, if you just leave that in the comments, so I will try to get back to you. Um, additionally, if you would like to open up a paid support case where you can get more detailed and more personalized uh, responses where we'll work with you to resolve any issues, you can do that by contacting us using the information in the video description. And uh, other than that, I hope that you found this video useful and that you enjoyed it. And thank you so much for watching and have a great day.